accidentally locked us out. It's two in the morning. As I was like, you can pay for everything, so I'm just gonna leave my purse at home. And I forgot that you need a card to keep. And now we're waiting for... So we're going to try to sneak into the building that I actually legally live in. We're, we're trying to climb the fire escape to see if the fire escape door is unlocked from the outside. Please be open, please be open. Nope. I mean, we, you could try all eight of them. Yeah. Oh, is it not? Oh, that's not even my building. <laughs> Okay, we were actually breaking and entering. <laughs> that's not my building. No, that's next door. Oops. Oh, okay. And I'm obviously not the first person to forget my card key and come through this way. Yeah. <gasps> well, yeah. My first time ever. Oh, I wonder if you can go outside. Oh yeah, I've never been up here before. <laughs> this is so scary that this is the ninth floor because I always hear noises coming from the ninth floor. Because I always hear noises coming from the ninth floor. So it's day three. I woke up today at like 9.40, um, I was meant to wake up at like 7.58 and go to the park to work out, did not happen, went to sleep at like 3.30, turns out I'm not young enough to do this anymore. I was not I was not In this shiny place here. This See, I feel like half the door should be black. That's just pink. This is where black people live. If I throw my camera over, do you think? <laughs> be like, excuse me, I've left my camera over. Do you think you can pass it back to us? Black pink. Is there anybody else that lives anywhere else? Aren't you? No. Why would you want to live here? <laughs> I live here. <laughs> <laughs> Say bye to taxi. Bye taxi. Bye, bye taxi. So this is um Namu Hyun from Infinite. Oh you know what? He's probably related to me. Dolim just got uh Yeah. 
He's like my grandson. My child will be Nam Ki something, and then my child below him will be Nam something Hyun. Be gone. He's my grandchild. He's my grandson. And he's my neighbor also. Oh, really? So it's um, 9.20 and my friend's still asleep. Mm. <sighs> Morning, Ali. Morning. <laughs> Apparently, Nia, some celebrities, some K-pop stars, and they're now going to go and like, knock him down every single <laughs> door, stand in front of the security cameras. How nice of him to give me the, the bed. Yeah, how nice. That's a hard bed, though. Oh, God, yeah, it is. <laughs> so I'm out now. No idea where I'm going. I think I walk in this direction and the way the taxi came yesterday. What's good is probably that there can be no like students around at this time because students in Korea start at like 8 and then end at like 8. Oh snap, I'm gonna get on over. So in Korea apparently people don't wear summer clothes yet, even though it's like 20 something degrees. Um, because they need to acclimatize themselves so their body gets used to the heat, I kind of, I guess. I don't know. My theory is that you just get used to the fact that you're always gonna feel warm. So you wear like a sweatshirt now, I guess. But yeah, so I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts. It's proper British spring spring clothes. Uh, and I've got my big, huge backpack, my tripod, and my GoPro. So I'm going full tourist. Oh, I'm so hungry. The thing is, I don't mind doing full tourist look. People know that I'm a tourist, right? Especially when I'm speaking English to a camera. They kind of fully no. Interesting. Oh, okay, what's this? This is for washing. This is for drinking. I'm not drinking that. Look at that. See, in England, you can only adopt animals. Korea's very forward, you can adopt entire parks. It's a 20 minute walk. Turns out I need to go back the way I came. <sighs> Why am I here? What am I doing? Who am I? Where am I? <sighs> and this is pretty cool. So this looks like a sort of public safe room. students walking past me like what is this guy doing <laughs> so Korea has these like university party events every celebration events most universities have them uh, and this I happen to be here around Korea in the week that they have them and what happens is they have these they invite some singers and artists k-pop artists to come perform and everyone has a jolly good old time so it looks like people set up stools around the entire campus Hopefully no spots that I'm just a random traveller. Uh, I think I'm at Hong Day at the moment, which will have red velvet and benzene coming later.
So I finally made it to the One Piece Cafe. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit smaller than I was expecting. <laughs> it's sick. Me and Luffy right here, best buds. Where I'm off to now, I'm off to. Oh my word, I've been walking the station for like 10 minutes. It's huge. Okay, so we're now here at the National Palace Museum of Korea. Actually, no, I just want to go to the palace. So which is, it used to be the main royal palace back in the Joseon dynasty, so it's the last dynasty, the last dynasty that we had before, well the modern day era I guess, and before Japanese imperialism. Uh, let me tell you a few facts before I actually go in. It was built in 1395 and it's located in northern Seoul, which apparently is where I am now. But there are five grand palaces of the Joseon dynasty and this is the biggest. Let's take a look. And one thing I noticed already is that there are a lot of people around here, I'll show you, I'll see you in a second, but wearing uh, something called hanbok, which is the traditional Korean dress. And I think it's really nice. Now being the traditional dress of Korea is not completely gone. People still wear it sometimes. For example, some people might wear it at the wedding. Uh, mainly just big celebrations. So now comes a big decision that happens whenever you go anywhere, right? Do you wait for the tour and, or do you go at your own pace and try and read everything? Okay. I'll try on the tour for a bit and then I'll update you guys with the information that I've learned. Hello, uh, my name is Park in uh, today I'm your guide. And then, uh, this trip will take about one hour. 500 uh, old buildings, only 10% remaining post Japanese imperialist takeover of uh, Korea from 1910. To 1945. Three main gates, and you have to go through the more to see all the buildings. There are 10 buildings here, I believe. Obviously, I wasn't listening too well. So this is sort of living quarters and everything. Uh, I guess in England, the equivalent would be Buckingham Palace, which uh, can't really see the resemblance. So this place out there right now is kind of like a ceremonial uh, area. Now there are there's a main middle part, and there's also those stones either side. Now each one of those stones, each side is slightly different. So on this side we have the military officers, and then we have on the other side civil officers, and they're all ranked, I believe, from front to back because obviously the king uh, and the royal family would be the front up inside this palace here. They'd rank them and they'd all stand here, I believe. And. Ceremony. Now, the stairs that they've blocked off in the middle, I believe, was only used by the king and the royal family. Civil officers and military officers would go up the stairs either side of that little middle bit, which they've now closed off. Uh, 
a fun little game I like to play when I'm in a crowded place like this is see how many photos I can photo about. Not in like a huge way, the sort of ones where sometimes someday in the future they'll turn around and be like, oh, there's someone in the background. So if you look at the top of that sort of middle, this entire big thing here, you see little statues. See, those are all characters from uh, it's a Journey to the West about the Monkey King. It's a, it's a traditional sort of Chinese tale where the Monkey King, Sun Wukong, I believe, travelled with a monk trying to look it up, Wikipedia. But yeah, so you see them there, you see them there. You see them everywhere. So there's a monk at the front, followed by the monkey, followed by, I think, a pig. So if you look around, most of these places, most of these buildings, they all have Chinese letters. Now that's because Korea uh, originally, you know, they use Chinese letters. Different sounds, but same letters. <laughs> but apparently this place behind me right here, this building, the one across from the one from the pond, is, um, where Sejong the Great, Sejong Taewa, one of the old kings of Korea, actually created the Korean language Hangul as it stands right now, which is phonetic. A little bit of Korean history and culture for you. Wow, so apparently a queen and concubines had different rooms. Now, get this the king was allowed to officially have one queen and nine concubines. What a life! Top geese. And obviously the concubines and the queen have different living quarters because technically speaking they do, they are classed differently. Not gonna lie, all these palaces and all these little doorways are starting to look the same. Obviously they're nice, but it's just... Uh, maybe it's because I'm not listening properly to the talk. I should probably listen. Obviously the queen's aim is to have a son. If they, she couldn't conceive a son, then she was legally allowed to adopt one of the sons from the concubines. So they just walk up and be like, I want this one. Obviously the concubines couldn't say anything, and then from then on, the concubine is no longer the biological mother. Well, it's the biological mother, but it's no longer the mother. That son is now the prince and son to the queen. I don't want to talk, but I need to get out of here and I have no idea where I am. I'm going to China. <laughs> oh, who is that? I'm fully in China now. I don't know what's going on. Um, when in doubt, go downhill. When in doubt, walk towards modern buildings. I saw like green smoke and stuff and I thought, whoa, this looks really fun. I think. This might be a protest. <laughs> I think it's a bus for public transport protest. See, in England, people just kind of don't turn up to work, and that's as far as a troop strike goes. In Korea, they take things seriously. They go, they go all in. Let's go check it out. So you come out of the palace, turn right. And then we'll keep walking down and you have this right by the station. 4,901 to borrow or rent a Hamburg. Now that is four pounds maybe? Nope, I can't calculate things. It's like three, three, three pounds maybe roughly. Come have a go.